Hello, welcome to Lemon Studios, where we talk anything and everything in entertainment. I'm, of course, Lemon himself, Zeke Lemon, and this is Crash right here. And this is my review for Echo. But before we get to that, let's get the house clean out of the way, shall we? I'm going to need you to leave a like, comment below, let me know your thoughts of Echo. And, of course, hit that subscribe button as that helps me grow into my YouTube career. Also, if you hit the subscribe button, he gets a treat. So, yeah. Do it for the dog. Anyway, let's get into this review. So, when Echo was first announced, I was one of the people that was just like, why? There's no point. It's not needed. Simply because I just thought it was coming from a time where Marvel was just overexposed, really. Like, there was just too many things coming out, and it was a little overwhelming, and I do believe was the start of the superhero fatigue that we are currently in. You want to lay down? Okay, he's laying down. Um, and just thought, you know, Echo's a cool character, but it didn't leave an impression of, like, Oh, I want to see more from her. I want to see a whole entire thing centered around her. I would have loved to see Echo again, but again, as a side character. I just had no urge to see her as the main. So I was just like, why? What's the point? It, it's not needed. Then they were like, we're going to drop all the episodes at the same time. And I was like, oh, this show's going to suck. See, I was right. Yep, there was no needed. Marvel doesn't see the point in it anymore. They saw it. They're like, oh, okay, let's just drop it so we can just get this over with and hopefully it glosses over. We're even going to put on Hulu. We're not even going to put on Disney+. Plus. And then, you know, the whole TVMA thing, I was like, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. You know, uh, the gambling, it's an experiment for real. And then you hear Charlie Cox as uh, Daredevil's going to be in it. And um, this is an opera Kingpin that's going to be in it, which obviously, but if you saw the ending of Hawkeye. And then the trailer came out and I was like, this looks pretty good. <laughs> like, I was really intrigued. But all the red flags that I just mentioned were there. So it's like, oh, well, we'll see. And then, you know, I sat down to watch it finally. It came out, what, Tuesday this week, and I finally had time to sit down and watch it. And I put all my feelings to the side of it, and I clicked play. And man, it's a really good show. Like, it's not just good, it's great at times. Now, it's not perfect by any means, but first things first, let's let's talk about um, Agua. Aqua, I think that's, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, I, I apologize. Uh, the one who plays uh, Maya Lopez slash Echo uh, does an absolutely phenomenal job, and she she's badass. I mean, like, I just, like, action star in the making, the way the camera was when, you know, she was hitting and punching, and it is visual, I'm not gonna lie. The action is much more punchy than the other Marvel properties, than most Marvel properties, and that's part of the reason why it was rated TVMA, because to me personally... I didn't really, it, to me, it just felt like a marketing uh, tactic, the TVMA, because it was very tame. I was just like, yeah, there's a little more blood. Whatever. Um, and she she did great with this character, with the sign, with the sign language and uh, just everyone around her. She was an absolute standout, and I am really excited to see more of her. I hope we do see more of her. I, I kind of hope there is a season two, because again... I really did enjoy the show. I thought it was absolutely great when it focused on Maya. When it focused on Maya and her dynamics with her family, with the Kingpin, and just anything that dealt with Maya. Not all of the attributes within the family hit, though. Like, they make a real point to, with her cousin uh, named Bonnie, I think, I think is her name, and that... Oh, they have such a strong relationship. They were so close as kids. And you do see that in the beginning for the most part. But then it's like, oh, well, Bonnie finds out that she's here and she didn't tell her. Oh, she's going to be so heartbroken. And, you know, things do happen. But not once did I ever feel like, yeah, this relationship's in jeopardy. Like, <laughs> it was kind of just glossed over. There's also a dynamic between the grandparents that was just kind of glossed over. But again, they're not the particular character. It's mainly about Echo, and the whole thing that's building up to is this inevitable battle with the Kingpin and their conversation. And to me, the, the show really sings from that, and they really show like how the relationship was really one-sided for the most part, how Kingpin really cared for her, but was never willing to do enough of the work to really understand her. And there's you know an obvious tactic that they use to really convey that and make that perfectly clear. And... What I also really appreciate about this show that really makes it stand out to me from everything else is how contained it is and how it didn't go big, like for the most part. Now, 
<clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, Marvel does have to marvel, and yeah, there is some extra stuff where, you know, explain why she is called Echo. And again, I have not read a single comic of Echo, so I'm not sure if this really is a power tribute of hers. If it is, cool. And for the most part, the way that it was presented, it was still very level because this was very street level. It felt very real for the most part until, you know, it gets to the end when Marvel has to Marvel. But even then, it was still very contained and it made, made sense and understood. And it was just great. It, it was just so refreshing. It was very refreshing that we didn't rely on the multiverse. We didn't rely on this bigger... Oh, it wasn't about the end of the world <laughs> for, for the MCU anymore. It was just about saving the town, saving the family, saving this one thing or this personal... It, it, it was just very intimate. It was a very intimate story and I really did appreciate that. The action is great. The performances are amazing excited to see the future what is moving forward uh, i absolutely love this show to me it's one of the it's one of the best uh this i, I said in my immediate reaction when i first got done and, uh, and i was like completely fresh that this is up there with loki season two and wandavision for me like i had an absolute ball um i am sad that they didn't promote it as hard as they did because i really think they could have got a, a lot out of it um but you know, it is what it is. Hopefully the word of mouth is strong enough where they're like, okay, we can warn a season two, we can see more. And hopefully this shows Marvel, hey, you don't have to rely on cameos. You don't have to rely on the multiverse. You don't have to keep going bigger. Sometimes you can go smaller and still very much succeed. Um, I don't think the TVMA was really helped the story by any means necessary. And again, I thought it was very tame for the most part. It was just self-contained and it just relied on the characters that it was dealt with. And it really sung with that. So yeah, if you haven't had a chance to see Echo, I highly recommend it. Go to Hulu, go to Disney Plus, watch it, uh, have a good time with it. And I think, and again, I do think it's safe for everyone, including the children. Um, it just depends on how much blood is too much blood for you. Uh, but yeah, comment below. Let me know your thoughts of Echo. Leave a like if you did enjoy this review, and I will see you here next time at Lemon Studios.